The one thing I want to say before we start this topic is I know you've ever met this topic before, but I just need you to forget everything you've ever heard. Just a blind slip. The biggest danger with a big class, especially like this, is to start this topic with some set of rules, you know, and you try to memorize the rules, try to apply them in hundreds and thousands of situations, and by so you say you know probability. Nothing could be further from the truth. Probability is a very general term, and in mathematics, uh, we say probability is the study in mathematics where numerical values are given to uncertain events occurring or not occurring. And by that case, we should have two types of probabilities, which are experimental and theoretical. When you talk of uh, experimental, is for example when you are given a coin, you are taught to flip a coin or to toss a coin. So the chances or the outcomes we are expecting are only two. That is, when you toss a coin, you can either get the head or you can either get the tail. Nothing uh, is further from the truth. That's what we say. When you toss a coin, the expected outcomes are either head or tail. And the chances, uh, the, sorry, the chances are 50-50, which is half, half. So this is experimental because something we are practicing. We have the theoretical uh, probability. Now, when the outcome of the event can be found without experimenting, now that is what we call the theoretical probability. That's what we call the theoretical probability. For example, we have a question here, uh, which is a theoretical uh, question. Probability. Now, in Langata constituency, the contestants for MP seat are Jalango, X, and Y, respectively. The probability that the three wins an election for the first round is given in the ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 6. Using a tree diagram, calculate the aspirant with the highest probability of winning the, the seat. So this is a theoretical probability. It is a theoretical probability because uh, we don't have to find, the, to, to do the experiments to get the outcomes of the events. All right? So, these are the chances, the ratios on how they are going to win. So, we have the contestant, we have Jalango, solution. Uh, we have Jalango. Uh, we have context X and we have context Y. Next Y. So, students, these are questions we are just doing. Uh, we are not politicians. So, the probability that uh, the three wins the election is given the ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 6. So, these are the ratios are given. 4 is to 2 is to 6. You see a tree diagram, calculate the aspirant with the highest probability of winning the election. So, first of all, we have to come up with the tree diagram and... The contestants are three, so we have three chances. This way, uh, we have Jalango, J, we have context X, and then we have context Y. Their probability, so the probability of eight of them winning, because we have three of them, will be a third. A third. A third, a third. Why we get a third? It is not given the question either. So, in the Langata constituency, the contestants we have in the ground, they are three. Nothing uh, is further from the truth here. They are three. So, the outcomes expected there, they are three. We'll have three ballots. All right? So, 
the probability of eight of them winning will be a third. One out of the total of them, which will be three. So, eight of them can win. Jalo can win. Context S can win. Y can win. So that's why we have a third. Because they were picked randomly. Now, the probability that the three wins an election for the first round is given the ratio of four is to two is to six. So we have Jalango, we have X, and we have Y. The probability is four is to two is to six. So the probability that Jalango wins an election is four, all right? Four out of the total, which is four plus two, that is six, plus six, that is twelve. Four out of six, which is you can simplify by four one by four three is a third. Uh, the probability that context X wins an election, so that is Jalango. The probability that X wins an election is two out of twelve. Two out of twelve. Uh, by 2, 1, by 2, 6, that is a 6, then we have y, which is 6, and that is 6 out of 12, by 6, 1, by 6, uh, 2, that is half. So, the probability that uh, Jalango wins an election is a third, so Jalango winning, he has only two chances. You can either win or you lose. Alright? So, for Jalango is a third. So, if the brother to win the election is a third, not winning will be uh, two out of three. Will be two out of three. That's for Jalango. For context X, the probability of him uh, winning is a sixth. So, you can either win or lose. So, it's a sixth. Uh, for losing, will be five out of six. Then we have context of Y, that is winning or losing. Uh, winning is a half. Losing is half. So, the question here was, but A, uh, calculate the contestant with the highest chances of winning. Calculate the contestant or the aspirant with the highest chances of winning. So for Jalango, those are the chances, the outcomes. For context X, that is the outcome. For context Y, that is the outcomes. Let's multiply. Jalango will be a third, multiplied by a third, which would be one out of nine. Uh, X will be a third, multiplied by a sixth, that will be one out of 18, then we have uh, context y, which will be a third, multiply by half, that will be 1 out of out of 6. So those are the outcomes we have, y is 1 over 6, uh, x is 1 of 18, and Jalango, 1 out of 9. One out of nine. So, among the three fractions, the one with the highest chances of winning the election is context Y, followed by Jalango. Then the third one is aspirant X. We say this is a question, and that is a story we normally do in classes. It is not more about politics.